It is a passive Ethernet filter and cable that allegedly improves the sound quality of network players. The system will set you back around 1180 euros including VAT. The Eno streaming system comprises of the Eno Ethernet filter and the Eno streaming cable. The Ethernet filter reduces a gigabit network connection to a 100 megabit and applies passive filters. According to their website, radio frequent and electromagnetic interference signals are effectively removed. One of the two founders, Richard Trussell, emailed me the following. Our experimentation started with trying to understand exactly what causes different Ethernet cables between a router switch and a streamer to change the sound so much. The conclusion of that was that it is unwanted noise mixed with the Ethernet signal itself, interfering with the process inside the streamer. Ethernet is a floating connection as you well know, so I tried techniques to remove the noise without being able to simply shunt it to the system ground point. Inside are hand wound chokes that are highly tuned by the careful selection of the conductor and the choke size and shape and the core material. It can remove as much of the noise as possible. We also found that using the very best quality of everything makes a worthwhile difference. The price reflects the quality of the materials plus the labour involved with making each Eno individually by hand." End of quote. To address the elephant in the room, the filter costs 579 British pounds excluding VAT which translates to about 820 euros including VAT in my country. The Eno streaming system, so the Eno filter plus the 1 meter Ethernet cable made from the same material as the fixed cable is priced at 829 British pounds excluding VAT resulting in 1175 euros including VAT in the Netherlands. All of course depending on the exchange rate and the local taxes. The cable attached to the Eno is to be connected to the Ethernet port on your network player or bridge. This cable is remarkably flexible and ends in the well known Taylor Gardner RJ45 connector. The input of the Eno is an Amphenol RJ45 socket that needs to be connected to your router. You can now play music from streaming services or internet radio. If you use a computer or NAS to play music from, that is to be connected to the router too. Network Acoustics advises you to insert a switch in between the router and the Eno filter, since switches are less noisy than routers. It does not need to be an audiophile switch though, as we will see later on. The Eno housing is a cheap plastic box, but according to Network Acoustics that has technical reasons. A metal box would have interfered with the magnetic fields generated inside by the chokes. It measures 120 by 94 by 32 mm has a 35 cm long fixed cable and weighs 245 grams. The 1 meter long Eno streaming cable has the same construction as the fixed cable and is terminated by two Taylor Gardner RJ45 connectors. The box can't be opened so I can't say anything about what happens inside. What is mentioned is that there are two kinds of metals to choose from for the wiring, CU and AG. That's obviously copper and silver, although the AG appears to be a mix of copper and silver. I will send the AG version. To start off I use the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier that powers the Audiophysics Scorpio loudspeakers over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cables. The DA converter was the Denafrips Terminator Plus connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM balanced interlinks. It got its input signal over I2S from the Denafrips Gaia using an HDMI cable, while two professional 75 ohm video BNC cables were used to clock the Gaia from the Terminator Plus. The streamer is the Aurelic Aries G2 connected to the Gaia over AudioQuest Diamond USB A2B cable. 
the RSG2 is connected to the network over an AudioQuest Diamond Cat7 Ethernet cable and the Ether Region switch. After the Ether Region, the network is built up as described in my video about my reference setups November 2020. For this comparative test I started with the Ether Region removed and compared that to the situation with the Ether Region in place. You can watch the Ether Region review for a full description but in short every parameter of the sound quality improved quite considerable. When I replaced the Ether Region with the Eno, the overall impression was more analog. It was more relaxed, voices and violins sounded more rounded, pace and rhythm was further improved and the sibilance reproduction was the best I have heard on this setup. Now don't get me wrong, these are not titanic changes. They are subtle, shifting from rather very excellent to very very excellent. Within the context of this setup important improvements but only to those used to listening at this level of sound quality. If both the Ether Region and the Eno clean up the signal, perhaps the two in series would provide an even better result. So I connected the Ether Region to the network and the Eno in between the Ether Region and the RSG2 streamer. This gave a result somewhere in between the use of both devices separately. It's something I've seen before and I did this test only for I know some of you would have wanted me to do this test. But in general I can say that using sound improvement measures in series always end up in a result that sounds impressive at first only to discover later that the result was unnatural. During testing I realized that two components in the setup by themselves also improve the quality of the analog signal that carries the digital information. It was the reason for me to buy the Aurelic Aries G2 streamer the clean digital output signals and the Denafrips Gaia only reason for existence is improving the analog signal that carries the digital information. I had questions about the expression the analog signal carrying the digital information before so let me explain. A digital electric signal does not exist. Digital information is transported as voltages. A low voltage like zero volts for a zero and a high voltage like for instance 2 volts for a 1. These form analog square waves that are subject to all mishaps other analog signals might suffer from. Noise, bandwidth limitations, time smearing and so on. When used in a digital system all is dimensioned in such a way that the digital information remains perfectly undamaged. This is what network specialists keep saying to me and they are right. They are wrong in that therefore the audio quality can't be influenced by what happens with the signal. For as soon as the digital to analog conversion has to take place, imperfections in the analog signal holding the digital information will cause jitter. The job of the devices in my setup is to minimize the distortion of the analog signal carrying the digital information. So it is only fair to test the Eno streaming system on its own. I therefore removed the Danafrix Gaia and the Aurelic Airs G2 streamer and replaced the latter with the Allo US Bridge signature running Rupee software that makes it a Rune Bridge endpoint. It was powered by the Allo Shanti, a twin power linear power supply that powers the Raspberry Pi smallboard computer in the US Bridge signature separately from the I2S converter inside that converts the I2S signal coming from the Pi into a USB audio class 2 signal and into a SPDIF signal. This way the electric noise the Raspberry Pi generates is kept away from the digital audio electronics. It costs around 400 euros including the power supply and I rated it top of my setup 2 or even low end of my setup 1 at that time. See my review for more information. Comparing the situation with the USB bridge signature connected directly to the network and with the Ether Regen inserted, there was clearly more focus and deeper staging. Sibilance was controlled better, although, as I know now, could even be better. Replacing the Ether Regen with the Eno gave improved sibilance quite clearly. 
Voices got that natural quality away from what was left of digital glaze. Bass got more texture, pace and rhythm improved and overall it was less stressed, more natural. In the absolute sense the improvements were clearly more noticeable than in the test with the Ares G2 and the Gaia. It's always somewhat frustrating when you don't know what exactly is done in a device you review. But with the Eno it's understandable. A lot of research trial and error must have been invested and although a patent is pending, such a small company will never be able to fight a big company or a company located outside of the western world. What counts in the end is the result and I think it might be clear to you that I love it. In a few thousand euro costing stereo, like my setup 2, it does wonders. In my setup 1, with the Denafrips Gaia and the Aurelic Aries G2, it's not a big improvement, but the clear refinement that makes it quite worthwhile. In general, doing reviews on audiophile Ethernet devices generates a lot of reactions by people that tell me that bits are bits. Since I can't explain what technically happens in the Eno, it is foreseeable there will be even more response. To restrict reactions only to useful ones, for this review all reactions will be moderated prior to going public. Only reactions of people that actually tried the Eno will go public and then only when the equipment used is listed plus a proof you really tried the Eno for instance by specifying the serial number or a photo of the Eno in front of your setup. To be clear, it's not about blocking negative experiences. It's about blocking reactions based on prejudice or containing troll-like behavior. You can easily try the Eno in your own situation since the network acoustics has a 30 day return policy. Well argumented reactions are always welcome, regardless whether you agree with the findings or not. Which brings me to the end of this show. But no, there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or mention it in the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>